ay Welcome to Speak Sex. I'm your host, Eve Eurydice, uh, and uh, I'm in Miami Beach. This is Pride Month, a little delayed because of uh, the coronavirus. And my guest today is Shelly Novak. Shelly is a drag comedian for the past 28 years here in Miami Beach. So very well known, a local celebrity, and in fact, a local hero, acknowledged as such in 2016 with the Pink Flamingo Local Hero Award by the city of Miami Beach. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. Shelly. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Yuri. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. In fact, I think I'm just going to call you doctor for the next hour. And that <laughs> way I'll feel like I've gotten a therapy session. <laughs> I love it. This week because, uh, you know, everybody needs someone to talk to. Do you receive the best of drag from the Miami New Times twice, which is, yeah, again, locally, a, a great uh, honor. And yeah, you are the host. I've, I've been uh -huh. around forever. You have, yeah. and you're yeah. good at it, and you have stayed true to it, which, <laughs> you know, I appreciate. <laughs> Endurance, you know. Yeah. Uh, and you are the host and creator of the Shelly Novak Awards, and you'll tell us all about it. But, you know, for me, you know, what, what's most interesting is, um, you know, this, this identity because, um, you know, it, it, it incorporates all genders and, you know, That's really yeah. what I feel we, you know, we all are, but are, are, yeah. are, are robbed of that potential because of the system, because of the patriarchy. And yeah, yeah. it's a crazy time. Yeah. Um, First, the thing, like you said, about uh, the all-encompassing all of genders, that's kind of how I feel. Like I can't speak for any, anybody else, and I don't really understand it all, and I can't wrap my head around it because I'm 53 years old. But I myself, I've never... And I'm sure there's a name for it. I'm sure one of the kids, the millennials could tell me, but I've never, I mean, I've always felt like Tommy, a man, but I do this character, Shelly, that is not trying to be a woman in any sense at all. It's always been kind of comical uh, and not, not making fun of a, wo a woman per se, but kind of just like being a man in a dress with this almost like cat skills, like almost lost art of, you know, humor, it's, it's, I mean, I think of Klinger on the TV show MASH or, <laughs> or, or, or you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, just, that's it, great, but, yeah. But, but also, Shelly Novak is also like a ventriloquist dummy in a sense where it's like, here I am, this short little fat, ugly guy, but I'll throw on this wig and it, like a ventriloquist dummy, I'm able to say and be the loud mouth that I truly am and say and do and, 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 and tell jokes and, 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 and and work blue and say stuff that I would never say as Tommy. I mean, I'm sure that a psychiatrist or, or <laughs> you know, Freud would have a field day. <laughs> But uh, as, as Tommy, I'm, I'm, I'm rather, I'm rather a, a quiet kind of homebody. But when I put the Shelly Novak wig on, it's like a ventriloquist dummy. And all of a sudden I can just be this other person and I'm talking and saying and doing and, and I could never, be a beauty queen i could never be right but there's a different there's a difference between like the beauty queen which i feel is so much about like the patriarchy yeah. standards right and and homogenizing everybody um yeah. and, and the glamour queen which is just doing yourself up right which yeah. has kind of like that you know movie movie star sparkle you know you You get your oh, well, face done and you get your, yeah. you know, dress on and you get your heels on and you put your wig on and now you're ready to like face the world. There is like that, yep. you know, oh, so that's the glamour and the fact that, you know, you know and, and that's, we can and do then, it, you know, both men and women can do it. Uh, yeah. And I think, I think a, a woman will tell you there's a lot of power in a really beautiful dress and a beautiful, I know a beautiful pair of shoes. It might sound chauvinist and I'm not trying to, but I think that there's, whatever power you have use it you know like when i when i'm getting in drag i, I if anything i try to make the pa patriarchy uncomfortable right and, you, there's, and there's a lot of straight men that are extremely uncomfortable oh yeah by a guy who's kind of butch 
what wearing a dress and singing Broadway show tunes, you know, it, it just it's, some some people can be find it very off putting, but other people find it fun and comforting, and it's it's just it's it's a, it's a strange. My thing is just my thing is humor. Um, is 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 basically what it, it all boils down to for me. Humor, well, you know, the, saved, the the humor saved, kind saved of like since I was a child. Yeah, it's it saved my life since I was a child. Humor has helped me through my adolescence, uh, through coming out, through uh, navigating uh, the AIDS crisis, yeah. uh, be, you know, be becoming an adult. And now coronavirus, I mean, if I didn't have a sense of humor, I would have been dead a long time ago. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And, you know, it's like the only option. It's either that or violence. And we're not, you know, we're not for violence because that's how, you know, the system kind of like enforces its rules. So we got to yeah. go with the humor. You know, you yeah. it, it, humor kind of like dissolves that tension between our yeah. social conditioning, which is like, wait, you're a dude. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, the, 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 the kind of like breaking the taboo and mm-hmm. taking on the, you know, the so-called like, you know, feminine or women, uh, you know, attire, which really yeah. like should be available to everyone. Like, why is it not? Who says? Just, yeah, Who says? It's, it's, like, it's, it's what? Just it's just, <laughs> I know. It's, it's material. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I know. And if you look words, better, if you look you better know, in that, why shouldn't yeah. you get to wear it? Like, I don't even... Yeah, and- begin to understand it honestly you know the, yeah. like gender you know gender binding when it comes to like you know fashion is insane um but i think yeah i think that that's the one of the amazing um contributions you know of drag culture is yeah. you know breaking down that cliche and you got to do it as entertainment you know you, you cannot scare <laughs> You cannot scare the masses. <laughs> you gotta be funny. <laughs> yeah, but you know, there's there has been there's always been a need, a want, and a there was always been some form of drag from oh yeah from, uh, from from as far back as I'm sure the cavemen yeah for sure you know I mean? like you know the earliest theater because women anyway were not allowed to perform you know yeah. back, back in the beginnings of patriarchy. You know, drama Crazy, was right? all done by imagine. men. So yeah. the women didn't go to see it and they didn't participate on stage, of course. So the men were playing all the parts, you know. So the theater has the tradition of the stage includes yeah. men dressed as women, you know, acting yeah. as women from its inception. And it's yeah. never changed, you know. Yeah. I mean, then it went into opera and again it was, you know, the men singing the women. Sure soprano parts you know it just went on and on and on uh, yeah. and i feel like you know it, it's even more exciting when you get to do it off stage you know when you get to go to the restaurant when you get to you know participate in public life you know like with yeah. your friends going out as shelly and not just like within the limits of the performative space but the, over, yeah. or the overall kind of social performance we all do you know like social well, media is a performance space you know clearly mm. it's, it's not like truth uh, uh, per- exactly right we perform yeah. in front of the camera f- to each other yeah. and even when we go out you know you go to a club you go to out to eat like you get that's yourself thing, ready is, because you yeah, know you're going to be seen so that's another occasion when you one everyone like should be you know free to to express themselves in any mm. You know, in any form, in any character, in any look that makes well, them happy. Why Miami is a city that is unlike no other because oh, yeah. I mean, there's I mean, you get in drag and you're gonna go to dinner and then you're gonna go to the club and then you're gonna run around. You can run around the, the you know, run around town, run around Windwood, run around the beach. Um, and just, and, uh, you know what I mean? The people are, and it's are pretty normative. There. Yeah. And, I mean, Miami yeah, beach, it, which is where it, I live. Where Miami, you live. I believe, it's it's normative. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Has been much more accepting of of a, of a drag kind of essence. Uh, I mean, and that's why you can look back as far as the the advent of of film 
in silent film, there was a movie called A, a Gay in, a Florida Enchantment or A Gay Enchantment. I think it was A Florida Enchantment, it was called. Huh. And, it, it was, and there was actual drag queens or uh, trans, trans uh, or tra- gender illusionists or however you'd like to call them. And this was like at the advent of uh, silent films, uh, Florida Enchantment, all the way up into the birdcage. I mean, we have we we have a yeah a, a rich history of drag. Oh, we do. And, uh, and uh, and I think it's always been a little more uh, free spirited down here because people uh, would come down here and uh, let their hair down. The yes, way that they exactly. Would say in Vegas, uh, to some extent, Los Angeles, but um, yeah, yeah. There's a much. I mean, you know, when you're in Boston, where I grew up. And you have to wear four four layers of clothing, and you're freezing, and you're running from, you know, one freezing doorway to try to catch a bus in four feet of snow. It's a little harder to be free spirited and freewheeling and sexual and out of control and wild than it is to be in Miami. In the tropics, I, yeah, where we're yeah, all I've half been, naked I've, I've anyway. Miami, <laughs> I, haven't worn, I haven't, yeah, I haven't worn a shirt in 28 years. Yeah, exactly. My yeah. God, someone sees Even me though, a shirt, they I must I'm say, I, I used to go to the annual uh, Fantasia, I think it was called, you know, in Provincetown. Um, oh, Provincetown, yeah. They, yeah. yeah they, so w- once yeah, a year, a it was store. like a sure. big cross-dressing convention. And... Um, okay. I, you know, it was so it was so great to attend because you had like doctors and judges and you know prof- yeah. university professors and all these like upstanding, you know, m- male uh, or male identifying, you know, c- citizens, members of society, and we would all like hang out together. And be yeah. completely done up in drag, and and you know we're, we're talking about like thousands of dollars of of outfits <laughs> and yep. they look amazing oh my god they looked so good you know and then they had th- their platforms were not just about you know uh, the, the drug uh, ex- expression or self-expression yeah. uh, but also social issues you know and issues of like uh, you know equality and justice oh, well, and, just, listen, and many of them an were and many of them were and are uh, hetero, heteronormative, you know, they they came with yes. their wives, um, yep. and I think that I, or, uh, you know, having spoken to a number of them, they, you know, they had sexual exchange with their wives, with themselves, uh, you know, in their female identity, just as often, oh, yeah. and yeah. that was like lesbian sex, basically. <laughs> I mean, very famously, the the director Ed Wood said that. He was uh, more afraid when he was storming the beaches of Normandy in World War II. He was more afraid of um, being uh, caught in uh, women's underwear, which he was wearing under his uh, Marines uniform or his army wow. uniform as he stormed the, stormed the beaches of Normandy. He was afraid if he got shot, they'd find out that he was wearing a bra and panties. Yeah. So I'm glad that the shame is gone. And people go have fun. Let your freak flag fly and let people... Do what you want to do as long as you're not. My, I've always said as long as long as you're not harming children or animals, go have a party. Yeah, and what do you think about RuPaul and the success of his, uh, you know, reality TV show, and you know well, how that seems to normalize or open up the conversation, right? Um, I think uh, it's great for the generation that people are obsessed with it. I haven't, I've never watched one episode. Oh, okay. And I, I, and not that I don't, I don't think it's a wonderful thing. I think that it's, it's the, the people's acceptance has gone through the roof and that's a great thing. I'm just not into reality TV and mm-hmm. I, hate, I hate anything that, uh, uh, can, any kind of competition where people are pitted against one another, mm. and, and I also yeah. feel like and I, I also feel that. like I, could, I couldn't tell any of them apart, anyways, because they all do their makeup the same way, and they all kind of look like the same to me. I couldn't tell who anyone from anyone. There's only one that I love, and it's Courtney Act. And if you're out there, Courtney Act, uh, I can say that yes, I guess I have one that I love, and it was Court. It's Courtney Act. And that's but wonderful. It, but 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 RuPaul, it just seems competitive and fighting each other and mm. but that's like but that listen but that falls under any that's any show big brother yeah any reality show i've it's just it, yeah. i just 
That's just the formula. Think, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just I just don't like competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I agree. You know, with maybe you. maybe if they got all the drag queens to get together and go clean up a playground or um mm. or uh, or put together a a, a, a youth center for uh, trans youth that are homeless, or maybe put together maybe all the drag queens could get together and um you know put together a homeless shelter for uh, kids that are kicked out of their houses instead of. Uh, Let's see who can put their eyeliner on the best. Yeah, I don't know. I it's a great I idea. Think, you know what I mean? You've got television. You've got a, you've got a platform. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, use it. Use Get it for there. social cause for good social instead. Yeah, yeah, instead of saying, mindless was, entertainment. Uh, well, yeah. it's, no. Listen, we. I'm just. I'm just. I just. I'm not a fan of competition. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with you because I think that's like that comes from that, you know, ego in us that has been created, conditioned by the patriarchy that pits us against each other. So yeah, yeah, I support and, that. No, and I'm also, I also, I, 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 they don't use any South Florida drag queens. They, other than the, that, I can think of Latrice Royale and Serena Cha Cha, and I'm probably wrong. Trust me, people are gonna. Attack your comment sections after this uh, interview because I'm completely inappropriate. I actually did a um, a very well received comedy show called Triggered, mm -hmm. and I talked a lot about how comedy, um, how we need it, how it it speaks the truth during uh, all these crazy times. And I spoke about how George Carlin, the seven words that you'll never hear on television, which I are. I hope I can remember them. <laughs> I think motherfucker, cocksucker, cunt, hell, pissed him. Anyways, but it was like music, the way he said them. And mm. after he got the audience saying it with them wow. in, in, this, in this repetition and in the swearing almost became like a chant, music, musical in a sense. Like, you know? a, so like a ritual chant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, in humor, man, we need it more than ever nowadays. And, yeah. I, I, the world is surreal. I mean, it's, it's yeah. literally surreal. I read the I read the, the newspaper, um, and uh, it's just I, I just think to myself, is, is this crazy or is this a Mad Max movie we're living in? But yeah. hopefully, we'll change and we get better leadership. <laughs> <laughs> I swear that's a marijuana crop. I know, that's so funny. That's I so off funny. now, and I think it's COVID. But let me tell you that you know, speaking of bad leadership. Mm -hmm. The, the whole COVID thing, it's analogous to me. It reminds me so much. I'm 53 years old and I survived the AIDS crisis, but it was the, one of the worst yeah, times. Me too, yeah. I never thought, I never thought in my life I would have to live through that kind of pan, a, a pandemic with that kind of anxiety because back in the eighties, you know, we had no leadership. Um, we really didn't know in the beginning, you know, how it was transmitted. We didn't know about anything. It. Yeah. And there was a lot of misinformation, of course, yes. Because, yes. because it disproportionately hit the gay community. Uh, people were like, oh, yo, it's killing all the right people. I mean, there was it was, it was a terrible time. Yeah. And it was and it was such that people died overnight. And, and in was terrible no, ways, like you would see yeah, them it, suffer. It was just devastating. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you waste you wasted away. And it was all the most beautiful people. All the most beautiful people. In the people. beginning. Yes. And all yes. the most all the most talented people. Yes. All the, all, some of the best artists that we'll ever know, some of the best photographers, some of the best painters, right. some of the best actors, uh, musicians. Uh, just, we lost, we lost a generation. Yeah, we lost a generation. And it was major. But yeah. the thing, my, my analogy with the COVID is, we don't, the information seems to change and is it's like, it's like, do, is it in the air? Do we get it from a, a doorknob? And now the worst part that I feel so badly for this generation and just for everybody that they're having to deal with this is the, the, with, with AIDS, like, okay, you, you could hug and stuff like that and you could, you could have safe sex and you could work around it. You could, you could educate yourself and work through the crisis with COVID. It's like, I can't hug my grandmother. I can't take the subway. I'm a, you know what I mean? Yeah. If I take, if I take the subway, am, am I then going to, and if I visit my grandmother, I can't hug my grandmother. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I, yeah. I could give her COVID. It's such it's such an even more uncertain uh, anxiety. Yeah. I, 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 I can only 
my heart breaks for the people who are have anxiety to begin with. Yes. <laughs> to be living yeah. to be living in times like these. Because we're not set up as human beings to go without the human touch. touch. Yeah. yeah. We're not set up as the human animal to go without sex and love and kissing and hugging and fucking and socializing and dancing and eating and sharing food together. And it's just, it's just, it's just, so this, this time to have to, to have to, and why do you think they put people in solitary confinement? You know, Exactly. It's the worst thing. It's the worst thing you can do to people. Right. Exactly. You know, I agree. And this isolation, the one you get sick, you know, you have to be isolated. And these people we saw who couldn't say goodbye to their families. That's just devastating stuff. Yeah. But hopefully oh. we'll get more information soon. You know, I mean, during during the AIDS crisis, I remember for a while, we didn't yeah. know. We didn't know how it was passed. We didn't know. Yeah. And then the first thing we heard is like through sex, but we didn't understand yeah. exactly what, how. You know, it took, a, it took a long time, you know, and the whole concept yeah. that just when we got, had like sex sleep, basically, um, yeah. we, we, we meet, you know, then we found, uh, we were told that like sex can kill you. You know, yeah. to set us back, um, I think like decades, right, in yeah. this struggle, and I hope that this doesn't happen now because the Me Too movement has just taken off. You know, yeah. the, and and it's possible that like we're gonna get set, set back again because all the women are like home taking care of their kids. They you know they don't they can't go back to work as easily. So it's almost like the system uses you know uh, illness uh, th- that it could have prevented, but didn't no. you know uh, t- you know have the resources to take care of them when they started uh, in yeah. the fir- original outbreaks and then the it, the system uses it to kind of like brainwash us to go right back you know um, yeah. where it where it wants us and be m- more normative so yeah like not not touching and and hugging and and being with each other like going into yeah. you know going to Burning Man and the equivalent you know Coachella like oh, all, yeah. all of those recent um, mm-hmm. you know places of gathering that were kind of like consciousness changing for a lot yep. of people including like white men you know yep. are cancelled yeah um, so but you know what it's sad maybe, it's scary maybe, maybe the pendulum mm-hmm. maybe the pendulum will swing completely the other way. And if a vaccine comes about, it will be like the end of World War II when people will be dancing in the streets and kissing oh. in the street. I want to, I, I hope to think that yeah. a vaccine will that we can all go out, yeah. And then, we'll, and then we will be, we'll be making love in the streets and it'll yes. be like Woodstock and, and it will, and, oh my and the God. fire, and, and, and you know, the fire, and listen. I'm getting goose flesh. <laughs> I think, I think though that with the protests that have just been going on, and everything, and people, people, you know, they've been wearing their masks while they protest. God bless them. But you know what? They, they have every right. Get out there and have your voices be heard. Of course. And so yeah. much, listen, so much for social distancing in that respect. Say, what can you do? You know, it, 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 but I, I hope that that fire that we have from the protest with all these young kids, and they're, they're not going to take this shit anymore. Yes, that's, that's great. That when, that, when that pendulum swings the other way, that we're going to be all be about love. We're going to be about togetherness. We're going to give people the, you know, the, the right to love who they want to love. Ex- yes, uh, yes, so yes, that, yes. You know, black kids aren't going to be afraid that, that yes. they're getting pulled over by a cop if they're going to have be shot for, 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 for a fucking taillight being out. I, no, one should exactly. have, no one should have to live like that. Yeah. And hopefully, yeah. hopefully that, hopefully that fire will still, will burn. I think if, I think people being trapped in their houses making them more angry. Yeah, I you agree. Know I, mean? I agree, they and they're paying attention. You know, like many more people watch those eight minutes and fifty-four seconds, or however many there were, you know, of George Floyd being killed, than yeah. if they had work and they were out and about busy. So yeah. that that helped, I think. You know, kind of focused everybody's attention. The to entire what's happening, world. You know, the, yeah. yeah, the entire world. Yeah, but also, like as you said, you know, use it to kind of like end violence. You know, so yeah. Police is violent, you know, defund oh. the violence, the, the police. But like, don't, you know, yeah, our, I don't even get our, on the subject of that. I just, uh, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the police at all because yeah, of course, I'm, 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 I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm, I'm convinced 
I'm convinced that white supremacy and like the KKK are, have, have infiltrated the police department. It's just it, to me, it may, it's the only thing that makes sense that you could go out there and gleefully want to kill people, people of color. Yeah. I mean, what, what it, it doesn't make sense. I know. And, and given them that, the that, that make, power only, is so that, that's arbitrary in a democracy that these people who supposedly are paid by our taxes to protect us instead have the power to like attack and kill us, the citizens whom they're supposed to serve. It's just like, yeah. if you think about it logically, it's unacceptable. The whole, no. you know, the whole way that it's set up, it's unacceptable. Who is the enemy here? Like, why are they attacking the citizens, as if we are a foreign army. You know, we are the ones they're protecting. George Floyd is the one they should be protecting. And it's just, you know, but I feel that a, a lot of it is like the conditioning, you know, like the ego conditioning that the patriarchy has created in our brains, you know, so they set no. us against each other, you know, like no matter what it is, you know, the, the men are against the women or the, you know, fundamentally the, this religion against the other religion or, you know, this skin color against another skin color or this class against another class. It's a divine the conquer. Like that's the whole, the, the whole mode you know, mode of being. So what you yeah. said about us kind of like uniting and going out in the street and celebrating and staying in a place of like togetherness, I think well, is once, the only way to move forward. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I think white people have to put their, their money where their mouth is. Yeah. For support, sure. support black causes, put the, you know, fund uh, the NAACP, put money into the, uh, the, the funds that bail people out of jail. Yeah, uh, put for your money sure. Where your mouth is. Yeah. If you go in, if you're going there just to take a picture of yourself holding a sign so you can get Instagram likes, you're not you're not really there to help the cause. Yeah, that's performative. You know? so, that's not you know they don't you know internalize what I mean? it. it. Yeah. Yeah, it ha you have to have follow through. We have to have follow through. And in right. in, in, in November, you know, we don't we didn't we didn't really get to too great of a choice but we've got to get a democrat in there and and you know i feel the other thing we need to do is like check in with ourselves you know check in with ourselves like constantly you know daily yeah, and man. make sure that the ra the racial bias that was kind of like planted in our minds you know, is not active, you know, so as we spend our days, as we live our lives, just check in. I think that's super important, you know, instead yep. of like the Instagramming and the Facebooking, it's just like check with yourself as you live your life, you know, as you interact with like, you know, people who don't look like you of any kind, yep. you know, are you in any way prejudicial, you know, yep. and that's how we change. We change from the inside out. Um, so I wanted to ask you, Shelley, how did you begin in your, uh, how did Shelley be get conceived? How did you, uh, you, Tommy, come up with Shelley? What was the genesis? So crazy. Um, well, I moved to Miami in 1992 mm -hmm. and I had a, um, uh, just one box of, of belongings that was UPS down to uh, Miami and in it was a blonde wig and a seafoam green uh, sequin dress and uh, some seafoam green uh, pastel pumps. And I put them on and I went to um, a tea dance that was uh, held outside. Um, Kenny Scharf, the, uh, mm, yes. the artist, yes, that is, yeah. uh, he owned the Winter Haven Hotel. And uh, along with uh, the DJ Jody McDonald and uh, DJ Mark Leventhal, the late Mark Leventhal, they put together a, a tea dance. And this was in 92. And and friend and I were just in drag, standing on a speaker, dancing and eating pizza. And uh, they came up to us afterwards and said, listen, you're, you were hysterical. Uh, come back next week. We'll pay you 200 bucks. And I said to myself, wow, wait a minute. Get dressed as a woman and eat a bag of chips on a speaker for 200 bucks. Or, it's a good gig. <laughs> or or, or wait tables, go and wait tables for 16 hours. So I was like, uh, I was like, you know. <laughs> diner, <laughs> diner, wait, diner waitress, or get dressed as a diner waitress. Uh -huh. So I went. I was like, get dressed as a woman and eat pizza. I think I found my calling. Yeah. So that just became. And then what happened was, the Birdcage, uh, Chu Wong Fu, um, uh, the Queen of Pris Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, they all kind of came out all at once. And that that kind of zeitgeist of everything that happened, Versace was alive. It was the nine, early nineties in Miami Beach. I had I, I I very much resembled Nathan Lane and my drag, even though I've been doing it before uh, the Birdcage. That 
that looking like Nathan Lane in drag, mm. just I was just I was just blowing up. I got so much work. I mean, you could literally work every night, every night of the week, because at that time in the early nineties, there were so many drag and dinner reviews, so many drag show reviews. I mean, every restaurant wanted to have their own drag night. So you could literally work every night of the week, like twice on Sunday. And at that that's point, wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Well, half the so time you know, you know David Ron and and Adora Drag, right? Danilo oh, De La Torre. Of, of course, if yeah. it wasn't for if it wasn't for Adora, you can blame her. There's a lot of people you can blame for the advent of Shelley Novak, but uh, Adora was one of the first people to give me uh, one of my first breaks. It's because lovely. Because there were so many. Yeah, oh, I so love them people, both. I love them both. So many people know. dying to get on stage, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, we had. We were we were in competition with each other, uh, a la RuPaul. I think we were more in competition with ourselves to see how good we could be, and to to, 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 to try every week to try to top ourselves. And uh, Adora hosted a place called Barrio, and that was the place. if you could get on that stage, then you knew that you were on the South Beach scene. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And is we we could is still happening, right? Or am Wigwood. I- Wigwood. Oh my God, Wigwood is one of the most wonderful things to hit Miami. Right. Yeah, I believe it's. I believe it's in its fourth year. Yeah, this this year was the fourth year, I believe, and it's Gramps and Winwood and Queef Latina, who's a right. Uh, and, Queef Latina and, is yeah, I, and another I hope local I'm not legend. Forgetting DJ Hot Pants. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody else. I'm sure. I, I guarantee you, I'm forgetting the other people that that put together. Uh, Sleeper speaks. The people who put together wig whatever year, I don't know how they do it. I can be, I can barely get together uh, a karaoke night, and that's all that's all done for you. You press a button, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. These kids are wrangling like a some of the big best shows and lots of talent uh, and huge all, crowds. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and there's such a feeling of community. Uh, you don't you go to some things and you just feel like, oh, they're doing this for absolute. Somebody's getting somebody's getting a check from Camel Cigarettes. You know what I mean? This is this isn't like that. It's just like it's about the performance and community, and 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 I just it's and the tropical. They have Pizza Tropical right inside of Grams. Yeah, best, and just like the sense the of freedom. Pizza, the best pizza. It's so good. I mean, I hate to say it, but I will go work for Pizza Gramps. I will do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, were you when you came? It was Lucky Chang's was open because that was like my okay. first. Uh, that was the first time I came to Miami Beach, and I stayed at the Deco Plage, and I walked down Lincoln Road, and I walked in, and I was like, "Oh, yeah. I'm home." <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, Lucky great. Chang's came out of New York, and to work there it was at the Miami Beach one to get just yeah. to get a couple to get bookings. I mean, I was very lucky, you know, because I was I'm, I never was. A good lip syncer. I'm a shitty, shitty lip syncer. Terrible lip syncer. Um, and but I, I, you know, I went and you know, I think it was, you know, they knew I was a funny conversationalist and I'm great in the crowd. And I'm, you know, I, I'll toot my own horn, a master of cocktail conversation. But uh, as a lip syncer, complete, complete, another utter shit. Yeah. Um, one time at the Cardoso a million years ago, Gloria Stefan's place. Uh, Mm-hmm. Tara Solomon was there, John Hood. I mean, it was just back when, you know, Versace was alive. It was a fun zeitgeist kind of like wild time that early South Beach, that it's never going to be like that again, no matter what. Um, but I was getting ready to lip sync something and the cassette broke. And Gloria Stefan said, you know, you have a shitty voice. You know, you have an okay voice. She didn't say that. She said, you have an okay voice. Just sing it. Yeah. So I went out and I sang... Uh, Dusty, a Dusty Springfield song in my own, you know, kind of off key, Elaine Stritch, gruff voice. I mean, you hear my, you can you hear my speaking voice. I'm sure you can only imagine what my, my <laughs> singing voice was. That was, the be- that was the beginning of just being a comedian, telling jokes, not using a backing track, singing in my own voice. And, um, yeah, and that was it. That's how it all kind of came. And about. what about just, Elaine Lancaster, by the way? Do you have any uh, stories or? <laughs> well, Elaine, Elaine was always very, very kind to me. Um, when I had cancer in 2013, 
Um, see, I mean, everyone likes to have a listen. You, you, everyone can give a bad Elaine Lancaster story. She's on the wrong side of history. But I can tell you, in my experience, in 2013, I had cancer, and I, I lost everything. I had nothing, and I came back, and I had to do the Shelley Novak Awards, and I just, I just, I did. I had no eyebrows. I had no hair. I, mm. I was cancer. I had. I was cancer free, but I. I, I just didn't have it in me to do the Shelley Awards, and it was like the 25th year or something, or the 22nd year or something. Wow. And Elaine Lancaster wow. was like, "Was like, sugar, you, the people expect to have the awards. They want you in those awards." And Elaine Lancaster dressed me from head to foot, uh, put the wig on me. That's beautiful. Put me, and, made, and forced me to do the show. Now we've lost touch because our politics are different and I feel terribly Yeah, she's a Trump we're, supporter. And, you know, I feel terribly about it. You know what I mean? That we've lost Trump. But how many people, I mean, how, I've lost family members, I've lost friends. Politics has been so divisive. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, and you know, he just recently had uh, open heart surgery and, you know, even though he's a Trump supporter and he's on the wrong side of history, he's still a person and, you know, they cyber bullied him into a heart attack. Oh, really? I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah, open heart surgery. A lot of people don't know that because a lot of people, you have so much anger over Trump because I have so much anger over Trump. I'm almost in tears right now because I, you know, I argued with my own mom about it the other day. Wow. And, and but people have so much anger and they have no way to place it. And they placed it all solely on this one person because why not? They're, they, because he, and they did, and the kid had uh, uh, had to have open heart surgery. So, are mm. you happy? Did you get you? Did you achieve your goal of, of you know, of stopping Elaine Lancaster? I guess you did. But um, but it's, it's it's the world right now. The world needs to be healed. Yeah, we you know, definitely need the healing. And you know, I don't know. I don't think Biden is the solution. But we're gonna well, I, do I, our I, best I, to I, start I with trouble. Biden and get out of this yeah, insanity you know, and, 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 then, and I, I I hate what it did to my friend because my friend was a good person and now he's just caught up in the madness but I can say that about aunts and uncles I can say that about best friends I can say that about so many people and and it's and it's just I just wish people just would try kindness and and just go back to love and and camaraderie yeah and, yeah you know it's it's like invasion of the body snatchers you wake up yeah. one day and you go you realize your best friend or somebody is like has these feelings or has these, the, it, right. you know. It's a, it's, you think you think to yourself, well, how how did Hitler start and get a country to back what what he did? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, it's just what it, I think. It's that famous saying. It's just when good people do nothing. Yeah, and I mean, so, make America great again. Hold on, like, what did America do for all the drug performers? You know, for that whole drug culture, like. What was great before that you want to have it happen again? You know, yeah. it just to me, like, you know, there was so much repression, you know, like, for God's sake, you know, sodomy was a crime until so recently. So what's there to make great again? You know, yeah. it, it may we make sense for those, you know, really conservative values, you know, folks. Um, but yeah. I just don't understand why so many in the drug community, um, I think, you know, it's like we're still married, you know, there, there are a lot of, of people who are still kind of like committed to the duality, you know, like I am a, a, a star, you know, a fashion, a fashion queen or, you know, yeah. on the stage, but like in my house, I'm a conservative white male, you know, and so that kind of like justifies, it's some sort of like, um, disconnect you know a duality yeah. I, of I, identity yeah, so I, they don't I connect the two around that yeah i could never understand that every day yeah. that i step outside of my house in a dress i'm putting i never thought i'd say it but it, it, it went from um the fun and the the almost candy colored pop of the, the bird cage circa 1993 to now i walk outside of my house and I'm, i worry you know am i gonna am i gonna get shot well wow. you know it, 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 now getting in a dress it's it's it, it's become a political statement, uh, almost like it's Stonewall, nineteen sixty eight. You know, wow. so it's just it, that, yeah. Just, I, it's just like I just hope that I just hope that people can just try kindness. 
They yeah. tried Let's to hope that it becomes like 1968 in the best ways too. I'm, right? I'm honest. Yeah, I honestly hope that's what I kept saying about the with all of this hate and division, the pendulum has got to swing back to kindness yeah. and in, in, inclusion and, and loving one another. You know, Eartha Kitt very famously said, "We're never going to figure out race unless we start worrying about the human race. Forget about." You know what I mean? Yeah. All the different races there are. No, there's just the human race. And yeah. you know And we're all and we're all queer <laughs> in our own ways. You know, like if oh, you take God. whatever Jesus, the you know, the norm yeah. is, everybody's queer. <laughs> Everybody's a little bit gay. Please yeah. give it two pep two Pepsi's and a Percocet and they're all gay for the weekend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> The so like, let's make America queer again. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it. I'm trying every day <laughs> with COVID. I can't even get out and hug people. I don't know what we're going to do. How is sexuality going to be affected by COVID? Yeah. They, and they've said that they found it in that COVID coronavirus was found in semen. So oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, they just found that out. I mean, well, who knows what's going to happen? Well, I, what kind of a fun filled journey are we going to have in the next decade? We don't know. I just hope we get better leadership. Yeah. And I, and I hope that people just your neighbors, you know, like, like I've been going to food banks and like just bringing food back to my building mm. and like making sure that everybody's fed. And like, cause I mean, I mean, I feel so helpless and I, I, I mean, other than voting in November, everyone, and it's so easy to get registered to vote. You just go to go to vote.org and you can register online and get out there and vote. And yes, and, try, and, and, and we try, are, and try, we all yeah, gotta do to it. Vote for the right people. And, yeah, and and bring and like vote. get your friends, you know, your buddies, like just do it with them, you know, like yep. take a moment and go online and register them in case they yep. don't vote, you know, because we need every, you know, Florida, every vote counts, every vote counts, it's huge, you know. Well, we could, yes, and if everybody voted in Florida instead of like the last time when a lot of people sat home. Right. We yeah. Hope, we can you know, change this entire national result. I feel very, and I'm sure I'm not the only one out there that feels like a little powerless in this world. So my advice mm -hmm. to everybody is try to just be kinder with people. Try to know that everybody's going through something. Everybody's struggling with something right now. And my thing, what I've been doing is just trying to feed everybody. Um, letting people know about the, the different food banks that are available bringing food back to my building, making sure everyone's fed in the building, the older people in the building, making sure that they've got food because I feel so helpless, but it's funny. But I feel like I have control over food because my windows are always open. There's something always on the stove. There's always music. No. And food and there's always music and food like wafting out the window along with marijuana smoke. <laughs> but, but if a neighbor, if a neighbor walks by and says, Ooh, that smells good. What you got cooking? That when someone says that, that means I'm hungry, but they're yeah. afraid to ask. They're afraid to ask. So, so you know. Yeah, so, that's that's so, what we gotta do. Yeah, yeah. So feed them. So feed them. If you've got some, if you've got the means to take care of somebody, then do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. What about TP? I don't, do so you know TP? Today? I don't know. I hear it. I hear it. It's beautiful. I don't though. know. I've just it's been just it's just it's just been so hard when you work in the when you work in uh public and um you know for you know four nights a week and like i used to always oh people are breathing on me people talking too close people's bad breath oh i gotta listen to someone's story that's going nowhere da, da, da. and now it's like I, when you're away from people you miss it i, I miss it, it I, my self-esteem is so low that applause all that applause was my validation yeah of course if you're a performer that's what you want uh, yeah that's I, you I, 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 yeah, I miss the validation and the people. And, and I swear when I get back into public, I am not going to care if your breath is bad. I'm not going <laughs> to care if the story goes nowhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, just, I'm, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. And I, I, and certainly, I certainly hope there's a vaccine and the pendulum swings back. Yeah. Towards, the, towards the world of love. Yeah, let's hope this happens this year. That would be great. And yeah, for sure, like, you know, Miami needs all of our, you know, drug culture and drug performance back out in 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 mass, you know, in force. Because we have like an army. <laughs> we, we really now, do. I can think really of so do. many names. So, you know, and it's... Um, 
And for me, like, you know, it's socially transformative. We get to infiltrate <laughs> this, this country, you know, and make it all the way that it is when we're, you know, gathered together in Miami yeah. Beach. In- Before we wrap this up, I just okay. have a few things I want to say. Yeah, please. You plug. can find my podcast. I have to, I have to plug my, yeah. I have to plug my podcast. And my podcast is called Shut Up and Listen with Shelly Novak. And you mm. can find it. You can find it on iTunes or wherever you listen to your local podcast. But Shut Up and Listen with Shelly Novak. I've interviewed all the big wigs of Miami Beach and Los Angeles. And that is on iTunes. Mm-hmm. Um, what else did I want to mention? Okay. And then I wanted to mention, oh, if you are on Miami Beach and you're struggling with um, food issues, um, we have on Miami Beach, if you're a resident, you have bring your ID. You have to drive in a car because they load up the back of the car. We do it Wednesday at 21st. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Forgive me. Wednesday at 8700 Collins Avenue. And you have to wear a mask and come in a car and we can fill your car up with food. Wednesday is on 8700 Collins Saturday morning, and the Wednesday is at 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., okay? And then Saturday morning at 20, 2100 Collins, we do it 9 a.m. until 11 a.m. And that's also, you have to wear a mask and come in a car. It's cars only because we'll fill up your car with food. So if you're hurting for food right now, you've got 8700 in Collins, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. on Wednesdays. And Saturday mornings, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., on 21st and Collins, wonderful, fresh produce, wonderful, great food for the family. That's beautiful. Don't go without it. There's no shame in going and asking for help when you need it. And we're doing it on Wednesdays in the afternoon and then Saturday mornings. Uh, and that's a Miami Beach thing. I love and, it. Uh, I love it. Thank you. And that's mm-hmm. it. That's all I got to say. Yuri, I wish that we talked more about like South Beach and all of that, but I just have a hard time talking about frivolous stuff when I'm watching the world burn. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. You'll come back when it's all healed and yeah. we'll catch, yeah, and we'll catch well, listen, up. What we're, what we're going to do is when there's a vaccine, we're going to get together and we're going to yeah. have to have some kind of a large sex party. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We're going to put their keys in a bowl like it's 1972. Yeah. Yeah, Danilo oh Danilo uh, was coming here, you know, to the studio and, you know, we we canceled like a week or two into the beginning yeah. of COVID. So yeah, we're yeah. all going to get together and have his, yeah. his story is fascinating. If you get him to tell about how he got over to, came to America and his journey is fascinating. Yeah. You, you, yeah. You, 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 it'll be wonderful when you get to talk to Dan, Danilo. Yeah. He's wonderful. Well, thank you for coming on and everyone out there. Thank you for listening. And uh, thank you. Yeah. And I and I'm, I'm sure you're going to hear it in the comments because I'm controversial. <laughs> Good, but I'm going to end it controversy. with controversy. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm going to end. I'm just going to end it with this. Get out there and love everybody. Just love one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And when this is when this is when this is over, we're going to hug. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Right. Okay. Right. Lots of love. Bye. 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 Lots of love. Bye. And until next week, everybody speak sex and believe Eve. Love incessantly, I would be gone.